Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about cephalosporines. I'd argue that these are the most commonly tested and important antibiotics. And in this video, I've collected all the things that you should know. Cephalosporines are subclassified into five groups or five generations based on the organism they treat. As a good rule of thumb, the more you approach to the fifth generation, the more gram-negative coverage you have. And the more you approach the first generation, the more gram-positive you have. And the third generation is a good mix of both. First generation includes cefazoline and cefalexin. And we use them to treat staph infection, especially as a prophylaxis prior to surgery, proteus infection, E. coli, and Klebsiella. Remember PESC for first generation. Second generation medications are Cefaclor, Cefoxetine, and Cefuroxime. These help treating H. influenza, Enterobacter, Neisseria, Serratia, Proteus, E. coli, and Klebsiella. Keep in mind that the only medication in this class that can cross the blood-brain barrier and treat CNS infection is Cefuroxime. Third generation medications are Ceftriaxone, Cefotaxime, and Cefapirazone. This group is neither the most effective in treating gram-positive like the first generation, nor the most effective in treating gram-negative like the fifth generation, but rather have a moderate effect in both. The entire third generation can cross the blood-brain barrier and treat CNS infections, except for Cefopirazone. And Ceftazidine is very effective against Pseudomonas. As a side note, cefopirazone and ceftriaxone are excreted by the bile, while others are renally excreted. Fourth generation includes cefepime, and is very effective against gram-negative infections, especially pseudomonas. The fifth and last generation includes ceftriaxone, which is excellent in treating gram-negative infections and drug-resistant bacteria, like MRSA, Enterococci, and Listeria. They do not, however, treat Pseudomonas. Both penicillin and cephalosporine work on the cell wall synthesis and they inhibit the peptidoglycan layer, while penicillin inhibits the cross-linking of peptidoglycan layer, cephalosporine inhibits the synthesis of the layer and they are both beta-lactam antibiotics. Their side effects, just like penicillin, include hypersensitivity, autoimmune hemolytic reaction, disulfiram-like reaction, vitamin K deficiency, and nephrotoxicity. Because of their similarity to penicillin, if a patient has penicillin sensitivity that results in skin rash, they can take cephalosporines, but if their penicillin sensitivity results in anaphylaxis, cephalosporines are also contraindicated. Here's a small quiz for you to test your retention. Which cephalosporine do we use to treat the following infections? Alright guys, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully this helps.